Okay, so we're here with Silky at the Bitwig stand. Hey man, how's it going? Uh, I'm all good, man. All good. Just um, here demonstrating Bitwig. Um, and uh, I'm a user from since version 3, really. That's when I started using it really properly for my production. But yeah, I'm a lover of Bitwig. What is it about Bitwig that kind of brought you to it? Why do you use Bitwig? So uh, first of all, it was a modulation system. So I, I kind of got into it version, version 1, I bought it, but I didn't really use it until version 3 because that's when it was like fully fleshed with the grid came out as well. And the grid is something that I use extensively in all my productions. So yeah, I love it. Cool. So uh, let me show you basically how I use the grid in my own kind of personal production. This is my template that I usually, you know, I basically every track I, um, I bring up this template. And it's, it's a mainly a drum template because uh, my production is mainly, um, it's a dubstep production usually or garage. So it's drum heavy. So I, I always make sure that I've got my, my drum set up. So let me show you. So down here, if you look, there's, um, there's these different samplers inside, uh, inside the grid. So you can see these are all separate samplers. And it's got, all, it's got 127 samples per sampler. So I've got all my, I basically took some time out to find all my favorite samples and put them into these little samplers here. And if you, you can see how it works, uh, you've got this select knob, which see the select, it changes up here when I change this knob down here. So you can see the select changing. And that basically selects a different drum sound. So cool. that kind of goes through and selects one of those. But because I wanted more than 127, I had to basically make a banking system. So I've got an also a bank knob here, which you can see changes that value here. And that will change which bank I'm getting the drum sound from. Cool. So you can see how it flows there. Um, and then oh, I yeah, it moves that yellow yeah, dot. Yeah, you see, see yeah, it moves that dot. Okay. Yeah, so like, yeah, it changes now, where yeah. it's coming from. Um, and then, uh, then I've got the pitch set up here. If you look down here, I can change the pitch of the sound. So let's play some. So I, can, I can change the pitch. I can shorten the note. So if you look up here. I change this knob and it makes it a short version of that sound. I can make a little fade in if I want a little fade in. I can delay the overall signal. And then I can change the, the, where the playhead starts. So it's probably easier to see if we look here. You can see the playhead there. Playhead changes. So if I've got, point, yeah, if I've got a sample that starts a little bit later, I can just quickly do that. Or I can do it as a creative effect. Um, so that's, that's the first page. And then we have page two. I've got a little distortion circuit here. So increase that. Increase the distortion. But then I also I wanted to have it so that it's pre and post um, filter. Because obviously that gives it a different texture. Yeah. So I've got a pre and post filter which kind of changes here. You see. If I select that, you see how it switches between the two. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that changes the effect. So, so you've got kind of like a custom processing chain. Yeah, exactly, for my, for my drums. And I've got these, so this is, like, this is the kick version of it. I've also got a snare version, a hi-hat version, which are all pretty similar because you, mostly for drums, you want a similar type of control. Uh, I've also got an invert here for the polarity. So I can invert the polarity. I can uh, change it to pitch mode. So that now it's um, down to whatever note I play will change the pitch of the drum. I've got the different filter types. Uh, see there? So I can change the, uh, so this is what, without actually going into the grid. So usually when I'm doing this, I'm not actually inside the grid, I'm just showing you. Whereas yeah. I, just, I just treat this as a plugin in a sense of like, I'm just using it like this, you know? Yeah. And, and where do you sequence these sounds? Like, how do you go about sequencing them? So here, you've got two different kind of versions of where you can sequence it. You've got um, the session view, kind of. We, I think it's called the clip launcher in Bitwig. Um, so that's familiar to people from Ableton. Um, and then, yeah, you can sequence it like here. Yeah. Or, or you can bring it out here, which is kind of unique to Bitwig, where you can kind of take a, a clip and just drag it straight into your arrangement view. And then you just click on this, and now it's in, in the arrangement, you know? And I can loop it if I want. And now I've got it here. But it's cool because I've always got like a, a version of it here where I can just kind of go back 
and be like, okay, uh, I want to like test out, maybe I want to do a little version of this. So go like that. And now I can make like a, a slightly different version of it. And another really cool thing that I can do now is, because um, I've done all that set up with the, with the grid, I've actually got this um, certain functionality that's attached to the MPE, the MPE controls. So if I increase the pressure, I think that actually shortens the note. So yeah. And then the timbre, the timbre is actually connected to the cutoff. So, so you can get really creative with that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, I think that's the thing with, with Bitwig. It seems that you can link so many different things together, right? Yeah. From one one parameter to another. And it's really up to you what, what is important to you, what you want to link, because you can link all of them. You know, so it's great. really, yeah, it's really great. And so do, do you like process? Do you have processing on the master as well? Do you have like a drum bus that's processing everything together? So I've got a drum bus. I don't have anything on it at the moment. I don't usually put things on my drum bus um, until right at the end. If, uh, and it's usually quite light processing. I like to do the processing on the individual channels mostly, but everyone's different. Great. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for showing us through Bitwig and thanks your workflow. Looks really good. All right, thanks, mate. Nice one. Take care.